Okay, the last part uh, that we need to show with eigenvalues and eigenvectors is uh, essentially to tie together these two pieces. So we have um, an iterative system like this, xk plus 1 equals a matrix A times a vector x sub k. And the idea here is that this x might represent the state of my system at time k, and we're iterating it forward in time from x0 to x1 to x2 and so on up to xn. And we're going to use eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix A to understand why sometimes this series expands and blows up to infinity, and why sometimes this contracts and decays uh, to zero. Okay? So we've gone through and shown that um, every time you step forward, you multiply by the matrix A. So x at time step n is given by my matrix A to the power n times x naught. And we're going to use these useful uh, identities that we derived last time from the eigen, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Remember, T is a matrix whose columns are eigenvectors of A. D is a diagonal matrix whose entries are the eigen, sorry, T columns are eigenvectors. D, the diagonal elements are eigenvalues. Okay? And so if I take my matrix A to the power n, I can write it as T times D to the n times t inverse. And remember this is nice because d to the n is pretty simple. d to the power n just looks like my lambdas to the n. And zeros everywhere else. So this is easy to compute and easy to interpret. Okay? And so the idea is um, essentially what we're going to look at is if some of these eigenvalues are, if all of the eigenvalues are small, then taking a small number to the power n makes it even smaller. But if some of these eigenvalues are large, then taking a large number to a big power n makes them even larger. Okay? Um, I mean, we can think about this like, um, let's say that lambda was equal to 0 0.01. Okay? Then lambda to the fourth power is equal to 0 .0000, uh, so I need 0001. Okay, it's a really, 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 really small number. But for example, if lambda was 10, and I take lambda to the fourth power, then I have 10,000. Okay? So if I take a small number to a power, it gets smaller. If I take a big number to a power, it gets bigger. And the basic idea is if lambda, if the you know, absolute value of lambda is less than 1, then lambda to the n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So as I keep increasing my n, this lambda to the n gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so, for example, if all of these lambdas, if all of my eigenvalues of A were less than 1, then this matrix D to the n would just be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and so A to the n would be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and this vector xn would be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay? Make sense? So that's the first case. If lambda is um, less than 1, then lambda to the n goes to 0. The next case is if lambda is bigger than 1, then we have the opposite. We have lambda to the n blows up. It goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. Okay? And this makes sense, right? If I have a big lambda and I take it to a, you know, the billion, you know, if I iterate this thing a billion times, then this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually blow up to infinity. And so if even a single one of my eigenvalues of the A matrix, if a single eigenvalue of A is bigger than 1, then this sequence can go unstable and become, unstable just means blows up to infinity. The sequence can blow up to infinity if even a single one of my eigenvalues uh, is larger than 1 or has magnitude larger than 1. Pretty interesting. And then you have the kind of neutral case where if lambda equals 1, then lambda to the n, um, it also stays with magnitude equal to 1. Uh, as n goes to infinity. 
Okay, so these are kind of the two interesting cases up here. We see that if all of our eigenvalues are smaller than one, or you know have absolute value or magnitude smaller than one, then this system will be stable. My D matrix will just get smaller and smaller and smaller. All of these terms will get smaller. They will scale and multiply everything in A to the N, and it'll get smaller and smaller. And thus, this sequence of vectors will eventually converge to zero. Okay, that's in this first case when all my lambdas are less than one. But remember, if I have even a single lambda, if a single eigenvalue of this matrix A is greater than one, or its magnitude is greater than one, then this uh, series can diverge and blow up to infinity. Okay? This is a really, really, really important property. This is one of the most important uses of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, is that the eigenvalues of an A matrix tell me a lot about the stability of this sequence. It tells me if this sequence is going to blow up or converge to zero. Now the last thing I need to tell you, um, and I've, I've glossed over this a little bit, is up until now I've been talking like lambda is just a real number. It's 0.01 or 10 or something like that. But in reality, I can have eigenvalues of a matrix that are complex numbers. I can have you know, a real and an imaginary part to these eigenvalues. That's totally fine. This happens all the time in mathematics, um, and we understand that this is normal. But it makes this expression lambda to the n a little bit more complicated. Not much, but just a little bit more complicated. And so the last thing I want to show you is what happens uh, if our eigenvalues are actually um, complex numbers. Okay, so first I'm going to show you an example where you can get complex numbers. So if we have this A matrix, A equals 0, 2, negative 8, and 0, okay? We're just going to run through and compute its eigenvalue, eigenvalues really quickly, okay? And remember how we compute the eigenvalues. We look for special numbers lambda such that the following equation, such that determinant of A minus lambda I equals 0, okay? And so we're just going to look at a minus lambda i, and that equals um, minus lambda 2 minus 8 minus lambda. We're going to take the determinant of this. This is equal to lambda squared minus minus 16 is plus 16. And remember, that has to equal 0. So lambda equals plus or minus um, 4 i, right? I could bring this 16 over to both sides. I get lambda squared equals minus 16. And the only way that's possible is if lambda is plus or minus uh, 4i, OK? So I can get complex um, or imaginary eigenvalues even from real valued A matrices. That's totally normal, totally fine. And so the way we represent these is uh, by writing these numbers in the complex plane. And in the complex plane, we call it big C, you have the real part of your number and the imaginary part. And every complex number, every complex lambda can be written as a real number plus i times uh, another real number plus an imaginary number. Okay, so if I have some number lambda equals x plus i y, these are just you know, variables. I can also write it in polar coordinates. I can say that this is a radius r away from the origin, away from 0, and at some angle theta. Okay? This is um, you know, not a class in complex analysis, but this is something you, know, you would learn in a, a first complex analysis class. And so I can write, uh, for example, if I wanted to, I could say x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta. This is just trigonometry. OK, so these can go back and forth, r and theta, or x and y. But this r and theta notation is actually really useful when we think about the stability of eigenvalues, because you can say, well, lambda equals r theta. And if I want to look at lambda squared, I would say, well, lambda squared is equal to r squared so the radius gets squared, and the angle just gets multiplied by 2. Okay, so lambda squared, I have a square of the radius and twice the angle. Okay, so this thing right here might look like 
this might look like r squared 2 theta. And lambda cubed is r cubed 3 theta, and so on and so forth. I can go to lambda to the n. But what you'll notice is that this, this complex number lambda and lambda squared and lambda cubed, the size, the magnitude of lambda is given by its radius, and that gets raised to the power 2 or 3 or 4 or n or whatever we're, we're working with. So what we really care about is that the radius of our complex number is within the unit circle. So I have this, um, this unit circle. I call it the unit circle because it has radius 1, the unit. And as long as my eigenvalues live inside this unit circle, as long as they're inside this unit circle, that corresponds to the case where my magnitude of lambda is less than 1. So my radius is less than 1. All of these points are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and lambda to the n is going to go to 0. Okay? But if I have a single complex eigenvalue that's outside the unit circle, if this thing has a radius bigger than 1, radius bigger than 1, then that um, a to the power n, or that lambda to the power n, is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It might rotate, but the size is going to get astronomically large and eventually blow up to infinity. Okay? So the upshot to this story is that now we can understand why um, iterations of a state through some matrix A either blow up to infinity or go to zero based on the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of that matrix A. Okay, great.